In every shop I've worked in, whenever a tool is not cutting exactly as intended, the first thing a lot of people tend to do is immediately slow down the feed rate. I've seen people get their part set up, load the program, and without even trying to run it as it is, they immediately adjust the feed rate override to like 50 or 30 percent and start running from there. Then when the tool breaks down, they think it's because it's programmed too fast. A lot of people get in their mind that if they run at 50% feed rate, then the tool should last much longer. But this in fact is rarely the case when it comes to super alloys. If you have taken the time to do your research and you're using the benefit of starting somewhere around the manufacturer's recommended speeds and feeds, and you have a good rigid setup, chances are you aren't too far off from where you need to be. And even if something was off, the feed rate is going to have the second least impact on tool life the least being depth of cut. You may can get away with drastically slowing the feed rate on non-ferrous materials or soft carbon steels, but when you're machining materials like titanium, 13-8 stainless, ink and ale, or any material that is subject to work hardening, then this can be detrimental to your tool life. It's our natural response to think we need to slow the tool down because we already have it in our minds that we're trying to machine a super tough material, so if the tool is already wearing out, then it must be running too fast. I know I have personally been guilty of this many times myself, but let's examine what is really taking place at the cut whenever we do this. With any type of machining process you're performing, whether it's contour milling, pocketing, drilling, roughing, or finishing, no matter what it is, the speed, feed, and depth of cut that you're running is producing a certain chip thickness. That chip thickness is key in finding the correct cutting parameters to get maximum tool life, especially in super alloys. If the spindle speed and depth of cut stays the same and you start decreasing the feed rate, the chip thickness you produce gets thinner and thinner as the feed rate decreases. The thinner the chip, the easier it is to build heat in the tool and in the part. And that heat will start work hardening your material, which will start breaking down your end mill prematurely. Have you ever been running a part where you had to change the finishing tool out almost as much as the roughing tool? You were probably thinking, why am I having to change the finish tool so much when it's not cutting near as much material as the roughing tool? It very well could have been due to the feed rate being too low for the program speed coupled with the light depth of cut, which was generating heat in the tool or in the part, which caused the tool to wear prematurely. This could especially be true if you were running a skim pass where the tool is doing more rubbing than cutting. Super alloys are obviously very tough and the tougher the material is, the less free machining it becomes. As a result, these materials naturally generate a lot of heat when cutting regardless of the process you use. So it is super important to transfer that heat into the chip and not into the part. So as you are machining and it is producing heat, that heat has to go somewhere, right? And if your tool is producing a chip that is too thin, then it has nowhere else to go except for in the tool or in the part. But finding that perfect chip thickness will transfer that heat into the chip itself and out of the tool or your part. Now I'm not saying you should never slow down the feed rate in a program. As I said earlier, if you have done your research and calculated the correct chip thickness for the type of tool path and depth of cut you are taking, then the feed rate is going to have a lower impact on tool life as something such as surface footage would. All else being equal, surface footage will more than likely always have a higher impact on tool life over feed rate and depth of cut. This is especially true when turning on a lathe. I've seen on numerous occasions someone turning apart from a super alloy like ink and ale, and the inserts were breaking down sooner than they expected, so they adjusted the feed rate slower and slower each time they had to change the insert, not realizing this was having a small impact on their tool life and may have actually been making it worse. The first thing they should have adjusted is the surface footage. By keeping the surface footage the same and decreasing the feed rate, they were cutting less, which in their minds is exactly what they wanted to do, but what they didn't realize is the slower they made the feed rate, while keeping the surface footage the same, the more the tool was rubbing. Lowering the surface footage instead will increase the tool pressure, which would allow the tip of the insert to stay engaged in the cut rather than rubbing the material away. And it would also reduce the heat buildup from the higher RPMs that ultimately breaks down the cutting edge. This would have a much greater impact on tool life than lowering the feed rate first. You have to keep in mind that if you have selected the correct grade of insert or end mill with the correct coating for super alloys, 
Manufacturers like Kenna Metal design these tools specifically to cut these materials at the recommended feeds and speeds. Feeding below their recommendation may not activate some of the characteristics of the tool that causes it to be successful when running these types of materials. The key takeaway here is that slowing the feed is not always the answer. And instead of guessing what the feed rate should be, do the calculations and see what the thickness of the chip that you are producing is, and always keep that chip thickness in mind. This is a more accurate representation of what feed rate will work. Say if you decide to use a different tool that may have more or less flutes, because just memorizing the speed and feed isn't going to carry over to another machining application like it will if you simply know what chip thickness works well. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. If you found what you heard useful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to help support free education. See y'all soon.